it is also important for some countries to look into how patent offices can gather more information to prevent erroneous grant of patent and to see that traditional knowledge is not misappropriated or traditional knowledge associated with biodiversity is not misappropriated. Now, there are examples that countries have tried to imply, uh, implement like China and India have uh, databases on traditional knowledge. Coming to India, India does not have a uh, law on traditional knowledge which provides uh, positive rights based protection in the sense that uh, India does not clearly say that the holders of traditional knowledge shall have the right to you know protect their uh, uh, TK as such. However, we have legislations relating to the national biodiversity which to a certain extent protects the TK against misappropriation and it which would re also require fair and equitable benefit sharing including prior informed consent and certain rights of TK holders have come to be recognized through the national biodiversity act. Currently discussions are ongoing on passing a law on TK, however there is strong lack of consensus. Um, there, there was a draft copy of the bill that emerged, but nothing further has been discussed in relation to positive protection to be available made available to traditional knowledge. Indian experience with the traditional knowledge digital library has been unique and we will also study towards the end the importance of having a traditional knowledge digital library including its important limitations. The biological diversity act probably is one of the most important acts that was legislated in 2002 in relation to protection of biodiversity. Both prior informed consent and ABS based on knowledge or resource obtained from India is required. So, national biodiversity board that is a federal level board governs access by foreigners and the state biodiversity board regulates access by Indians or Indian companies. Now, the benefit that flows may directly go to the indigenous communities or individuals to the or to the national biodiversity fund wherever individuals or indigenous groups are not identifiable then it shall go to the national biodiversity fund. The monetary apart from the monetary gains the legislation requires that if by virtue of contract between the parties there can be a grant of joint ownership of IPRs, transfer of technology may be required, association of some Indian scientist in the research and development may be required and setting up of venture capital fund etcetera may also be required. Now, there is also a requirement of people's biodiversity register. As I mentioned to you more and more information relating to traditional knowledge associated with biodiversity and creation of such information leading to a grant of uh, uh, you know avoiding the grant of erroneous patents is important. So, what countries like India have done is they have come out with what are called as people's biodiversity registers. These people's biodiversity register basically um, try and locate the traditional knowledge within the territorial boundaries of the states and then can try and document them. Now, they have you know we some of the states have gone ahead and uh, have opened up these uh, uh, people's biodiversity registers. What is important to understand is that we clearly do not know uh, who is going to have access and uh, whether the access will be you know given by virtue of a commercial value. Under section 65 government has been obligated to protect TK in relating to biodiversity through measures such as registration or sui generis protection. However, as mentioned India has not still implemented these obligations in relation to positive form of protection for TK. However, draft protection conservation effective management of TK rules have been there for some time the 2009 draft, but it is not enforced as yet. So, there is a significant role for uh, TK holders in decision making process in this particular draft prior informed consent and how TK representatives would be selected is uh, uh, you know in this case is not clear. The patents act is one of the important pieces of legislation that allows you to create a kind of a framework that can avoid misappropriation of traditional knowledge and associated biological diversity. Most important is section 3 p. Here an invention which in effect is traditional knowledge or which is a mere aggregation of uh, or duplication of certain known properties of traditionally known components such kind of inventions will not be granted a patent. Now, it is very interesting to see what happens if the novelty aspect the inventive step aspect and the industrial application these three criteria that constitute an invention are qualified and yet section 3 p would exclude certain kind of inventions primarily because this kind of invention is an aggregation or duplication of known properties 
of traditional known components. So, it thus becomes important that you do not just have a layer of subject matter exclusion, but you also have a layer of patentability thresholds and a higher level of patentability threshold to prevent misappropriation. Section 3b, which discusses something similar to article 27.2, wherein patents may be uh, may not be granted on inventions, which primarily the commercial exploitation of which leads to ordinary pub, public ordinary public and morality crisis and which may cause serious prejudice to plant, animal or human life. This provision has not come to be interpreted through any kind of uh, 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 appellate court judgment, but suffice it to say at this moment that the commercial exploitation of the invention must lead to certain kind of consequences that I mentioned in section 3b. Furthermore, section 3j discusses certain biotechnology exceptions. Now, this clearly implements the obligations that are required under article 27.3b, wherein uh, member countries are free to exclude plants and animals and essentially biological processes, but they may not exclude for example, microorganisms and non essentially biological processes including microbiological processes. So, in, in this case section 3j of the patents act excludes plants, animals including parts thereof. Now, how the, the interpretation of parts thereof must lead to certain kinds of exclusions of biotechnology material is not particularly clear. Under section 10, which requires uh, patent applicants to disclose uh, their, uh, their, their uh, patented invention, their applications pertaining to biological material should disclose the source and geographical origin of the biological material. This is an important requirement under section 10 of the patents act. Similarly, this has been clarified and how this has to be done is clarified under form 1 under the patent rules. And under form 1, you would require declaration by an applicant that the biological material used was from India and that it has obtained prior permission from relevant authorities. Now, the source that I have taken from Anuradha RB suggests that there is no evidence of biodiversity act permission however, required. It means you need not go and get a you know specific certificate or a requirement from uh, you know that is not a, a clearly a requirement under the patent law. But what is the legal effect? Ultimately, the legal effect is revocation. A patent may be revoked both under section 64 and 66, if it does not comply with the disclosure norm under section 10. Now, this revocation is kind of interesting, because under section 64, you can revoke on all the grounds that contain to pertain to patentability, including lack of novelty, lack of inventive step, lack of industrial application and lack of disclosure. At the same time, our section 66 goes one step ahead and allows governments to revoke the patent purely on the ground of public interest or that it is mischievous to state. Now, provided you give a, an opportunity for a hearing. There are two examples primarily that lead to revocation under section 66. One of them will be discussed today that is Evestigen patent. Now, this particular patent was filed by an Indian company called Evestigen relating to the um, anti-diabetic properties of jamun and other uh, fruits. And uh, these pa patent applications were not opposed interestingly by, uh, by, by any groups including the uh, CSIR. However, CSIR had opposed the same patent application filed in the European patent office, but it did not op oppose the application, the similar application that was filed in India. So, the patent was granted in India and then later when this patent was noticed by government officials they sought revocation of the patent through the utilization of article section 66. And the reason primarily given is because it pertains to traditional knowledge as such and does not involve anything more than traditional knowledge. So, this is clearly an example of use of article 66, where clearly uh, prior to uh, the grant or even after the grant, there was no pre and post grant opposition at the patent office and no one challenged the patent for revocation. So, it was the bounden duty of the government to revoke it to uh, revoke it primarily because it was aggregation of traditional known components and it essentially formed traditional knowledge.